Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Panic, And we got a few things to get to. We're going to do a little bit of pre, uh, free agency preview. We've got a couple new draft picks for the Giants. And we are going to break down everything you need to know for the Daniel Jones contract. Justin, how are you? Hey, Bobby Skinner. Mad because I had a perfect game going into the ninth frame at my bowling league this past week. And I... Blew it. Blew it big time. Slipped at the foul line. Didn't even give a good shot. So I'll give another run on it soon. But I am excited that the Giants are going to be better and they're going to get better as a football team. There's like a few times a year where, you know, we're going to go into a weekend. We're going to go into a couple series of days. And, you know, we can actually say that the New York football Giants will be a better football team, hopefully by this time next week when we add a couple guys in free agency. Yeah. So before before we get into this episode, it was brought to you by a special person, Justin Pete. Benedetto. You know who that reminds me of, Justin? Who does that remind you of? Matt D. Benedetto, who used to drive the 21 Wood Brothers car. Now I think he races in the truck series. Justin, who who is this truck racer? That truck racer, Mr. De Benedetto, went to patreon.com slash talk giants. Two dollars a month plus some of the cheers. You get to hang out with us live while we record the shows. You get to hear everything that we talk about and all the times that we mess up because there was a period of the show that we messed up and now we are re-recording it and you get to hear all that and you get to be part of it patreon.com slash talking giants you'll be glad you did you'll be glad you did all right justin so let's break down this daniel jones contract so it is a four-year 160 million dollar deal um, but obviously we have 95 percent of the details out now so we know how it's structured we know the cap hit by year we know what's guaranteed and what's not and then we know we have a, a, a halfway decent understanding of what the incentives are and what they can get to so obviously it's still four years, one hundred sixty million dollars. It is an average annual value of forty million dollars per, per year. You say, well, Bobby, the fourth year that has a forty-seven and a half million dollar cap hit is not guaranteed at all. So it's kind of structured like a three-year, one hundred and twelve half, one hundred twelve million dollar deal. That's thirty and a half million average annual value. It's not forty, no, because. For the most part, all contracts are not what they look like exactly like on paper. So we are comparing it to the other contracts that are very similarly built. You know, not not everything's perfectly the same, but are similarly built where the last years don't have, uh, you know, guarantees. So it is a $40 million average annual value to start with it. Um, the signing bonus is $36 million, which gets spread throughout the entire contract. So that's $9 million on the cap every year for the signing bonus. So his cap hit for this year is $19 million, like we said. So that's 8.4% of the cap. The next three years after that, the cap hit is $45 million, 39 and a half, and then 56.5, which makes up 17.5, 14.5, and then 18.9% of the cap. Now, here's the biggest difference of the way we thought this would be restructured um, from what we saw on the Tuesday pod, Justin. You know how they said it was $94 million virtually guaranteed versus the $82 million that is fully guaranteed? Yeah. Most people, and it was it was actually even reported like this at first too, thought that that $12 million would be a roster bonus if he was on the roster in 2024. Credit to Joe Shane for getting this. That roster bonus of $12 million is not due until the fifth day of the league year in 2025. So it truly is a two-year deal. Like on paper, this is a two-year deal because if they wanted to cut him after two seasons, Justin, there would be $18 million in dead cap, but 21 and a half in savings. Now, I hopefully, hopefully we're not in that situation right. because that's still, um, that still is a good amount of dead cap uh, right there. And even if the Giants were looking to draft a quarterback at that point, I think, you know, unless they're in a really bad cap spot, you would like to at least have Daniel Jones to be the bridge guy to that. But as of right now, this is structured like a two, two and a half year deal. Here's why I still am in the camp of this is a three year deal. The cap hit next year is $45 million. That's 17.5% of the cap. Unless it goes terribly wrong this year, and they're like, we, we're going to have to move off this contract as soon as we can after this next season. I would assume some of that money to be turned into uh, either pushed into year three or void years added. And if it gets pushed into year three, which you, you don't want to put void years four years from now if you don't need to. If it gets pushed into year three where the cap hit is, is you know, six, 
six and a half million dollars less. Well, let's say it just you just turn that into the forty five and you, you swap the forty five and thirty nine and a half mil. I know this is all a lot of numbers throwing at people right now, but let's just say you switch the cap hit between those two years. Well, now you have, um, you know, you're only saving fifteen a uh, fourteen and a half mil with twenty five million dollars and dead cap after that th- after that um, second year. So I think at unless it goes terribly wrong this year, this ends up being a three year deal, which is I feel really good about that. I don't think there's a world. I don't think there's a world where they carry that cap hit next year. No, definitely not. And these contracts are built to be mutilated. You know, like that's just that's just the nature of contracts, the way they go. You know, hopefully, hopefully they're not like hopefully they are in a healthy enough cap situation that they don't have to do that. But if they're going to re-sign a guy like Saquon Barkley, if they sign a couple free agents, like you're going to have to move some money around, and that will most likely happen with this contract because it's going to be the biggest by far. Right, but at least it's the biggest with not a lot of years, and that, and that's where the Giants got the W. The Giants got the W by not giving him a lot of those guaranteed years. Like we're talking about, yeah, could there be a third year, but it's flexible, right? Um, and and I think it's it was very purposeful and very direct by the Giants to make 2025's cap hit lower than 2024's cap hit. Because then they know by the time 2025 comes around, you're talking about Dexter Lawrence. His contract may start to kick in. Andrew Thomas, that may be the, be the beginning of his new extended contract. Same thing with Xavier McKinney. But I would put Lawrence and Thomas as priorities number one and number two in terms of getting those guys extended next in-house, right? Um, and then, of course, there's a looming Saquon Barkley thing, but I'm not rooting for that to get done. Franchise tag him until the end of time. Um, so that it was done that way very purposefully, but it is very curious to see what are they going to do with 2024's cap hit, because that is, that is the area in which Daniel Jones reaches the W. Daniel Jones and his team get the W by that AAV being very, very high, where Daniel Jones is going to get his money, um, even though it's not for a lot of guaranteed years. Yeah, I mean, at most, you're going to have, out of the year two and year three of this, the lowest one of those cap hits is going to be you know, 14 to 16 percent, you know, because obviously the cap will be uh, lower in 2024 compared to 2025. And one of those years, it's going to be a big, big cap hit, yep. you know. Um, so and you're, you're going to have to deal with that. So, I mean, that's what happens when you give out a quarterback contract. Like at some point, you're going to have to pay for it um, and move money around on other contracts. So I mean, that's kind of the way it's built. But there is there is a true like you are fully out of this year four if you want to move on. Which, you know, if they want to draft, if if it, this doesn't go well and they want to draft a quarterback in year three, I don't want to cut Daniel Jones just to draft a quarterback. I want to keep him on the roster, you know. And then I really don't foresee any situation where after year one we're thinking like, oh god, we got to get out of this next year like as soon as possible. Like it, it, I don't see there being any type of disaster yeah. land where that happens. Yeah. All right. So we've we've talked about the body of work of the contract enough. You know, we we even did a good job of. You know, kind of speculating on it, previewing on it, you know, on, uh, you know, w- uh, Tuesday show, Tuesday, Wednesday show. What are your thoughts on the contract? How do you feel about it now that it's now that it's said and done? I have one word and a phrase to kind of summarize it all, but I want to well, hear what you would think. I think the incentives make this contract. So here's where Daniel Jones still won this contract because one where here's where we were wrong on the Wednesday show is the $12 million actually doesn't kick in until he's on the roster for 2025. Um, and another part where we're wrong is these incentives are a lot more atta- attainable than we thought where with, we looked at Josh Allen's incentives and they were win the AFC championship game, win the super bowl, win MVP, which there are those in there, but there's a maximum of $35 million in incentives that he can get. But there's seventy million dollars worth of incentives in there, so there's a lot of different ways. And if he played like he did last year, he would have got one point seven five million dollars in incentives and escalators. You know, so that bumps up the contract. You know, and Mike Florian, Pro Football Talk, wrote it. He gets uh, a one million dollar incentive and a one dollar one million dollar uh, escalator if he's a top fifteen quarterback. A one and a half for top in ten. What? In what quarterback rating? 
So we don't know the exact on that, but there's only a certain amount of things that a quarterback incentives can be on. They are passer rating, which uh, Daniel Jones was 13th in this year. So we, but see, the 1.75 doesn't add up. So there's other incentives we don't know exactly about. So passer rating 13th, completion percentage 6, interception percentage 1st, yards per attempt 24th, and touchdown passes 21st. Those last two weren't on it. Um, there is some rushing ones that usually aren't for quarterbacks, but yards for carry, he was fourth. I don't think yards for carry is going to be in there for a quarterback contract. And then rush, rushing touchdown 16th. I don't, I, I would doubt that the rushing ones are in there. Maybe they are, but. I'm guessing that they're passer rating. Yeah. And or if maybe the Giants... there's some that are passer rating, some that are completion percentage, because those are the only ones where an interception rate where he would have reached escalate, uh, inter- uh, incentives and escalators. And I, 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 me personally, I would not want to put interceptions in a contract thing just because I, I don't want that. I don't want my quarterback thinking if he throws one more interception on the season. He yeah, it lost. goes it goes against literally what Brian Dable was telling him last offseason about if you throw an interception here or there, it's fine, you know. <laughs> it, yeah. You know, kind of just cut cut loose and operate within the offense. I hope that they I hope that yards per attempt is in there. I, it it possibly can be. It, I mean it, it definitely possibly can. And maybe it's an accumulation of all those and, and averaged out. Um so we don't we don't know exactly. Yeah. I also don't um, want to stress too much on it because I don't I don't think I don't think Daniel Jones, I mean, that that may be something that he's thinking about, especially if like, hey, if I have to throw 25 passing touchdowns and I have 24 to get an extra however many millions millions of dollars, that, then I think he'll think about it then. But It would I don't just think be it, rankings in the, in the league. Um, I don't think that's something that's going to be like influencing how they operate. But, no, I mean, no, but again, definitely not. I want to revisit the question. How do you feel about this Daniel Jones contract? Um fine i mean daniel jones definitely won this deal uh because of all the, but where the giants got their wins is there is less guaranteed money than originally thought and you could get out after year two if you really really wanted to but i still view this as a year three deal the 40 million dollars average annual value if you want to argue with me that it's a three year 37 and a half okay well guess what we expect and hope he's going to hit some of these incentives so then it's still could be even more than 40 average annual value during those first three years so daniel jones definitely won these negotiations he did set a new precedent for quarterbacks and his range of play whether you're predicting future years or not um but this is i don't i don't look at this contract and then like see year two and year three cap hits and like <gasps> like scary like it's they're big numbers obviously but it's a quarterback contract that's what's going to happen yeah yeah you you use the word fine and I'm and I also use the word fine. Like I feel fine. I like Daniel Jones as a quarterback. I I really envision there to be a path where he does improve. It's honestly just the question of how much improvement is there going to be? Are we really going to go from an offense that is bottom of the barrel conservative wise, you know, air average air yards per attempt, yards per attempt? Are we really going to go for an offense that is bottom of the barrel in that to even average? Where I mean, we did in scoring, right? We went from bottom of the barrel in scoring, you know, from points per game to average points per game, right? You do you have those rankings on the top of your head? Yeah, they were fifteenth in points per game. DJ was eleventth in EPA per play. Um, in yeah, QBR. the EPA, the EPA QBR, stuff. I think I'm not, he was like six. Yeah, the EPA stuff. I'm not. I mean, you have Mike Kafka and Brian Dable at the helm. I'm not. I'm not that concerned about EPA. It's it's the. I mean, they scored fifth. They are fifteenth in points per game this year. Yeah, yeah. And if you're going to score points, the EPA is going to be all right. But I, I I need to see the explosive plays, and I need to see more of the flat out thirty plus games, like thirty point plus games. You know, not just you know scoring points on a consistent basis, but I need to see some of those games be be a higher scoring offensive output at times. Cause that's what the game is going to have to call for, especially in the postseason at times. So and another reason why, like I, I agree with you on those concerns, but those are just concerns for the giants being a good football team. It's not necessarily this contract in a vacuum because I'm not a believer in bottoming out. I don't believe that's how you get better by trying to bottom out and get the highest draft pick possible. Uh, there's, there's not very, they're really the only, the Cincinnati Bengals are a team that that's worked for and to be honest they weren't trying to do it right right and, uh, and they were paying a quarterback when they did it right it, it just it sucks that 
this is just what happens when you have to pay a quarterback. And it's it, it, this is it sucks that this is even what has to happen when you're paying a quarterback that hasn't proven all that much. Um, I think Daniel Jones did enough to prove that he did deserve this contract this year. Don't get me wrong. But outside of that, he has not proven that much. And what this contract does, and I'm taking this line from uh, the football, uh, the the athletics, the, let's try this again. Um, the Athletics, their football show, Robert Mays and his crew. What this Daniel Jones contract does is it, it turns up the difficulty of team building, uh, which we addressed that, you know, on you know this week's earlier show. Turns up the difficulty of team building because it is really putting a reliance on building through the draft when we're not we're not totally sure on how well Joe Shane and his crew can draft. Yeah, that's the biggest question mark for the Giants franchise right now. I actually, I, I think that is the biggest question mark is how good is Joe Shane at drafting players? Because you can be smart, you can do things the right way. This game of football can very simply be put down to are you good at drafting players? Like you can't just be a good drafter. You got to know how to run a franchise, know how to you know not bid against yourself and and overspend in free agency. But it's kind of why I love football as much as advanced as it gets. It's Hey, can you watch a dude and 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 tell if he's going to be good in the NFL? Can you get a guy who's you can you identify a guy in the third round who's going to be a star in the league and not just a depth piece or a, a below, a average to below average starter? Yeah, like those. That's what matters, you know. And we don't we don't have an answer on that. His entire rookie class was injured um, from his first year. You know, he had two premium picks with you know two top picks with Kayvon. We feel good about the Kayvon pick, Neil. Is a, is a TBD, no matter which way, you're, no matter how much you want to, no matter how positive you want to look at it, it is a TBD. And he puts such a premium on drafting young guys, too, that when are you going to be able to see the return? <laughs> you know, these draft, he drafts these guys that we'll, we'll see what the theme of this year's draft class is. I always feel like there's a theme every single year, like 2020's draft class. It was experience. Uh, this past year's draft class for the Giants was youth. So we'll see what the theme is. But. When are these? What? When, when is the expectation? When is the timeline for these guys to turn around where we can therefore say, "All right, you're a starter. All right, you're a depth guy. All right, you're a bust." I don't know from this year's draft class because we haven't even haven't seen them on the field. Yeah, yeah. I think Kayvon is the only one we have like so, like real confidence in. The others are all to be decided. Be- Bellinger too. We have yeah, Bellinger. Yeah, Bellinger is a good draft pick. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that. Um, but he's not gonna like a star player either. No. Uh, which doesn't mean which he's still a good draft pick though. Yeah. Uh, and anything else you want to clean up on this Daniel Jones contract? I mean, I, I feel like we got a pretty good, gave a good, pretty good. It's a, it's spitting out a lot of numbers, which isn't always the best for a podcast. But I thought we did a pretty decent job explaining it. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. I don't think Joe Shane got. Oh, he got such a steal. Only Daniel Jones two years. It's a, it's an expensive two years, and I and I think. There was a middle ground that was reached. So here's where I will say credit to Joe Shane is that he could have spread this out over five years, kind of like I thought he would. He could have spread this out over five years and the cap hits would have been lower in 2023. The caps hit would have been lower in 2024. And maybe 2025 would have been the year where he had to swallow that 50 million bullet, which is the here's like, here's an interesting question is swallowing the a $50 million bullet in 2025 is that easier to do in 2025 versus swallowing a $45 million bullet in 2024? What's easier to do? Um, so both sides worked out. Both sides got what they wanted, I feel. Um, and this is a fine contract for both sides. A boring yeah. analysis, but I think that's just true. I think we, I, think, I thought we explained it pretty well. If Daniel uh, Jones plays well, and if the Giants draft well, and they continue to upgrade, then this deal is going to look great. If Daniel Jones is not going to play well, or he's going to, or he's just going to kind of plateau at the same level that he is now, and they don't draft well, then the Daniel Jones contract is going to suck, and it's going to look bad. Right? Yeah. Actually, if even if, even if he plateaus, I, it's not a great contract, but I'm not. I'm not being like, what the hell did we do? It's because again, I am a bit. I am not a believer in bottling them out, and I'm I'm also a big believer that you don't need like having a a decent quarterback on your roster doesn't stop you from getting a great one. And we've shown we I mean we've shown that we sh- we sh- we showed that in the last pod when we talked about the five the five best young quarterbacks in the NFL. They all had guys who were paid besides the Bills with Tyrod Taylor. And even Tyrod Taylor got a pretty damn good contract. It was just a lot of fake numbers on it. Yeah. And they're able to trade off of it. All right, Justin, we're going to do our little free agency preview. But first, 
The Giants got a couple comp picks, pick 172 and pick 254. Um, you know, they let go of Keon Cross and Lorenzo Carter, Evan Ingram, and then there was one other one that they let go that played. Austin Johnson? Austin Johnson that played into it, and then they signed Mark Lewinsky and Tyro Toe that, that factored into it. Um, so now they have 11 picks. They have three day one and day two picks. They have the Chiefs, you know, third round comp pick that they got for uh, Ryan Poles getting a GM job. And they have three seventh round picks, one from the Ravens and the Ben Bredesen trade, their own, and then the comp pick. Um, quick trivia. What Giants player, past or present, was picked with either pick 254 or 172 in the last five years? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an offensive lineman. Did you see my tweet? No, no. But my guess is an offensive lineman because we just don't, we don't, we didn't prioritize offensive lineman early. We didn't draft this guy. I don't know them. Corey Cunningham. Ooh, I was almost right. Cardinals drafted him in the seventh with the pick two fifty four. That's a good seventh round pick, to be honest. Kinda. Um, one, I'm excited for more draft picks. I always am, even if they're seventh rounders. You know, they, the Giants had four seventh-round picks in 2020, and the one cl- draft class, Gettleman, pr- did a pretty damn good job one was that, and he got two special teams players who are still in the roster in Cam Brown and Carter Coffin and got Tay Crowder in the seventh round. So uh, you're not going to get superstars there, but you can get players that matter to the roster. Um, I do want to say this, because now you have all like these – you have three seventh-round picks and a sixth-round pick, and people are like, well, trade-up. Those picks are never used for real trade-ups – like picking like that those will have no impact on trading up from pick 25 to 21 or pick 57 to pick 49 those have those picks help as deal sweeteners when you are trading for current NFL players and we've seen that for the Giants you know the Keon Crossan uh trade um you know the Ben Bredesen trade the you know they picked they swapped the fifth and the sixth you know the Billy Price trade we sent BJ Hill and a seventh for the worst player in Billy Price uh so I just I just wanted to get that out there because I saw a lot of like, oh, now we can trade up. These seventh round picks are not going to help the Giants really trade up. Nobody wants seventh round picks in the draft. They just you, play, teams want to get rid of players that they don't have a lot of use for and want to and want to dart. That's what these seventh round picks can be traded for. You do you love seventh round picks because then you get to talk about them. No, what I'm saying is teams don't teams do like seventh round picks. They don't like them as far as like trading up into the draft. Well, there's a. There's one veteran wide receiver who I'm kind of, who the back part of my brain is on board trading for. Let's do our free agency preview first. Let's hear a word from Roman. Let's hear a word from Roman. Uh, I'll tell you what, if the Giants maybe trade for this veteran wide receiver that I'm thinking of that's on my brain right now, I may not need Roman because I'll just be that excited. But this ad is about Hair loss. 42% of men experience moderate to extensive hair loss in their lifetime. The sooner a person starts treatment for hair loss, the easier it is to keep the hair that they have. Roman. They offer clinically proven medication to help treat hair loss all from the comfort and the privacy of your home. Whether it's the hair that's on your head or taking care of something that's nearby the hair down low. Roman's got you covered. They offer both prescription medication and over-the-counter treatments. Research shows that around 80% of men who use prescription hair loss treatment had no further hair loss after two years, and getting started is simple. Complete a free online visit than a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. They'll work with you to find the best treatment plan, plus there is a free two-day Shipping. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. Right now, Roman has a special offer for our listeners. Use this link to get 20% off your first order. Just go to ro.co slash John Boy today. That's ro.co slash John Boy for 20% off today. You'll be glad you did with Roman, Bobby Skinner. It's kind of crazy how often we're talking about penises on this show. You're muted. I was going to say you, because you usually read those ads. Yeah, I, I, I take the bullet. Um, Are you excited for another hour and a half draft recap pod with 11 draft picks? Um, I have a feeling... 2021 was nice, where we just did six picks, got it done within an hour. I have a feeling it's going to be... Wait, wait, how... Did we trade up in last year's draft for anybody? No, we traded down. 
We traded down, so Twice. we did. So we had more than eleven. No, we ended up with eleven. We had we had oh we had nine or, going into the draft we had, and then we wound we up had with eight 11. or no, yeah we had nine going into the draft and we traded down twice and then we were like oh yeah second. that's right Joe Shane's right I have a feeling it's not going to be eleven again I think, think we made trade more or less <sighs> there could be there could be both acquisitions that determine whether it's more at one point and then less at another point or vice versa there could be less than 11 at one point and then we trade back like let's say from 25 and then there's we're back to 11 or we have 12 whatever so it just makes for an hour and a half long draft recap pod <laughs> where 2021 we only had six picks so that was quick we got that done within an hour and then in 2020 you forget we would do two draft recap pods. We did like rounds one through uh four and then rounds five through seven we can't do that again we got to we now we know we know it's just better just to get that all done in one episode and then 2019 was very weird we did a day one recap and then monday we just did let's talk about daniel jones for an hour and then we did the rest of the draft and with us being together in person what we did last year is all right 1 a.m 2 a.m let's record now (laughs) oh yeah the draft is the least amount of sleep we get all year long even though it's sunday even though the draft ends even though the draft is over on saturday you know, we we needed to do all the prep for all the freaking players that we had no clue who they were. Um, and then by the time it was all said and done, it was 1 a.m., 2 a.m. All right, let's record for an hour and a half. Thursday is a Thursday is a 2, 3 a.m. at the lowest every year. Friday night. Friday night now that we're doing the draft breakdown of whoever we get. So that's a 3, 4 a.m. night. Saturday night is a is a 2 3 a.m and then sunday yeah i mean we just don't sleep that week yeah like i remember literally going to the hotel sleeping for three hours waking up and getting back at it all right pat let's just pat ourselves on the back what you know listeners like shut up no one cares you get to talk about football for a living um wide or free agency preview Mm. so we're pretty reactive with free agency now where we will kind of react to you know, the the players they sign instead of going and watching film on a bunch of free agents like we did earlier in the show history. That is what um, reactive means. But for our, like, I remember our 2020, keep on talking about previous shows. Like, we put together, like, this is my free agency plan. These are who I would sign this contract. Um, now we just kind of go position by position and talk about guys and, and and go through it and talk about how you would attack this position. What position do you want to talk with? Start with wide receiver? Yeah, we could start, we could start with wide receiver because there's not necessarily a one specific wide receiver that I would want to sign, but there is maybe somebody that I'd be down to trade for. We'll talk about, let's talk about that. Cause you're going to throw out a big name. So I mentioned how I was listening to the, the athletic, their football show. I started looking into Deandre Hopkins. Listen, if you want to take a swing at somebody, that's a guy that's realistic. By the way, I don't think Higgins is realistic. I don't think Ayuk is realistic because I, I think the price tag that those guys would require when you trade for them, number one, and then just giving up draft compensation for them, number two, I think that's unrealistic. Yeah, that would be ideal. We don't live in a perfect world. If there, if you want to give Daniel Jones an alpha number one, at least for the next two years, I think DeAndre Hopkins would be realistic, and I still do think there's something left in the tank there. This, this year... Despite, yeah, he struggled with some injuries. I think he missed the final two games of this season. Uh, his knee flared up. Um, hey, he he tore his, uh, he, he had an MCL tear. He had a grade three MCL tear towards the end of the 2021 season. Joined the Did party he steroids? where... steroids? Well, that's, that's a different conversation. Joined the party of all the Giants that have torn their MCLs over the last, uh, over the last couple, year, couple years. Yards per route run, uh, which is a nice little metric that you know, just kind of evaluates efficiency and it's not determined on kind of the volume that you get. DeAndre Hopkins was 18th in the league this year in yards per route run. You could say that he always oh, lost a little bit of a step. He was right in front of Jamar Chase and right behind guys like Devonte Smith and Terry McLaurin. Um, also beat out DK Metcalf and Jacoby Myers. So I, it's not going to happen. Um, it's not like I'm not slamming my fists on the table saying the Giants should go out and do it. But if it's a second round pick that we're talking about, the Giants could trade back from 25, get another second round pick, and then that's basically 
you got your compensation back for DeAndre Hopkins, and you would have to kind of work out work out some sort of new deal with him to make that cap hit number go down. So that is a move that would help the Giants in the next two years better than most reasonable moves. I, to me, the injury and the aging is like I don't I don't think we're in a go a full go for it position right now for the Giants. Um, you know, and I would rather I would rather wait for the wide receivers to open up like did anybody expect AJ Brown to be traded at this time last year I would rather pick trade pick 25 than a, a guy that opened up somehow not and maybe no one does this year but just age I just don't I want to use that I want to trust that Joe Shane can draft well you know and I, I that's why I'm just not on the older aging guys that have injury issues. Now Hawkins would be an awesome addition. He's like you said, he still is a great wide receiver when he's on the field. But I just I'm not making that bet right now. Like I, I yeah. think that's a little too all. In. It's only a second. It would only be a second round pick. Probably have to tag on like a fifth or a sixth. Yeah, like so one of not, those picks that we just got. Yeah. So you're not giving up crazy compensation, but it's it's to me it's not a. I don't. I, I wouldn't do it. I would be patient. If you want to draft a receiver, possibly you can do that. Or I would be like, hey, another wide receiver can open up next year type thing. Yeah. So like I said, it's a it's a back brain. It's not it's not like a front brain, like I'm slamming my fists on the table saying I want it to get done. But thinking of something that's reasonable, thinking of how do we want to maximize a quarterback that we're now paying forty million dollars. And looking at this year's draft class being like, is there a good option at 25? Is there an option even out there that can be an alpha number one wide receiver? Even if, even if you were to take one at 25, I think Hopkins is realistic. And I, you know, you, you would just have to really cross, cross your T's and dot your I's that his health is up there and that he's ready to rock and roll, which I don't know if he is. Let's talk about the free agents wide receivers. A name, and we're just going to kind of go quickly through names and figure out their role. A name that's been thrown out there a lot, surprisingly, has been Paris Campbell, who did have a good year for the Colts, uh, 63 catches, 623 yards on a 70% catch catch rate. I played almost only in the slot, and I just don't think that's the Giants. Here's the thing. I love Paris Campbell coming out of the draft, and I think Paris Campbell can be a good player. I'm not signing a guy that's missed 34 games in his first four seasons. He played the full schedule this past year, but he has missed so many, so many so many games 34 games out of a po- out of a possible um 66 he's missed over 50 percent of his games in the nfl and he's just coming off of his first full season uh maybe he'll be dirt cheap but i don't i don't know if that's gonna happen i'm not on the paris campbell like i would rather spend that money on darius slayton and i don't even think darius slayton's coming back justin some people uh, have talked about DJ Chark. He was 46, tied for 46 in yards per route run this year. Um, he has an all right track record. I wonder what his market would look like. But He just I signed don't... a one-year deal coming off of the broken ankle uh, yeah. that he suffered with the Jags. I like DJ Chark. I think that could be, if you wanted to get a guy who's like a one borderline two, that could be the guy to go out there. Jacoby Myers obviously is probably the biggest name for Washington free agents. I don't see the Giants going out and doing that. Even though he's he going to get good, paid. Yeah, he's probably, like you said, he's probably going to get paid. Here's another name, and I'm actually intrigued by this guy. So Richie James is a free agent, right? And you remember how I said maybe we, could, if Richie James is going to command a decent chunk of cash, maybe try and find the next Richie James? This guy was cut the day we're recording this Braxton Berrios his highest snap share he's gotten his career is 38% um, and he's had 67 70% and 56% catch rates which are good 394 yards 431 yards and this last year didn't do much only 140 but that's without getting a ton of snap share and with arguably the last three years what team has had the worst quarterback play it's the New York Jets with Sam Darnold and Zach Wilson. And not just like horrible quarterback play, but like the most off-time, inaccurate QB play, which hurts slot receivers. And he was able to do halfway decent in there. And he's an all-pro returner. Like if we're this is my like my uh, trying to identify the 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 next Richie James, it might be Braxton Barrios. Like it's not flashy. Don't want him to start over Juan Dale when Juan Dale's healthy, but Braxton Barrios is definitely on on my list. Right on. Right on. I'm with you. Is there any other wide receivers that piqued your interest looking at the list? No. 
Not really. Yeah. Tight end. This one is worrying me. Because Mike Gusecki's out there. He's put up over 700 yards twice. That name's been out there. They didn't even play him this last year. And he flat out cannot block. He flat out cannot block. He can be a weapon in the receiving game. I don't think he's a top tier tight end receiver, but he's a good one. I I, I'm, I do not want to pay big money for Mike Gusecki. Like he he'll be valuable to the Giants, but he is such a bad he's such a bad blocker that Mike McDaniel didn't even want to play him. And also, nobody wanted to trade for him. Yeah, and like like tell the story on who a player is. Dolphins fans don't really love Mike Gusecki. You know, like our friend Brian Cat, who we had on the show a couple years ago for the preview pod. Like, Mike Gusecki, he, he just can't block. He's like one of the worst blocking tight ends in the NFL. Um, and again, this is not a guy putting up 900, 1,000 yards. Uh, I don't know what he's going to garner. I really don't. But if Evan Ingram was able to get one year, $9 million last year, Gusecki's going to get more than that. And rightfully so. He's a better player than Ingram. I, I'm not on this Mike Gusecki train. Like it'll be fun. It absolutely will be. A, it'd be fun to see him on the field, but I'm spending money. I'm spending the money that he's going to cost elsewhere. Yeah, if there's going to be more snaps where you're a liability than a than a benefit, you know there there will be more snaps where Mike Gusecki will be on the field where it's not a pass play or you're not being targeted. Um, then I'm I I'm with you in like drawing a line in the sand with my tight ends. Can you block or can you at least be on the field and not be a liability in blocking? That's yeah, like what he I want is a, tight end. He is a bad blocker. A liability as a blocker. Not just like he's not the best blocking tight end. Um, a name I like, Foster Moreau. Yeah. From yeah. the Raiders. He can block. Like, uh, it's, it's bueno. Like, he's a, he's a good blocker and he put up, you know, you know a few. He had some deep, like, he's kind of like a three-yard 45, 48 yards per game type of guy. Not not 48 yards per game, but like you go look at his stat, his game logs, and that's what he's uh, getting. Um, that could be an underrated one. Where again, that's that's what I'm looking at, looking for out of my tight ends, especially in free agency. Dalton Schultz would be the the if you wanted to spend real money. I think Dalton Schultz is very underrated, but I don't see us in that market. No, no. If the Giants go out like this is a vet minimum blocking tight end type of move that. I'll be like, okay, fine. That tight end joins the team. I'm not Moreau expecting will get them more to... than the vet man. He'll probably get like two, two years, seven million or something like that. Yeah, so that would, so that would be maybe a little bit of a vision of. I would hope this guy is maybe involved in the offense a little bit. But if their, if their vision on signing a tight end this year is to be like a blocking tight end and not really be somewhat involved in the offense, then don't spend really anything on it. You know. Yeah, or yeah, I mean, I guess there's there's a lot of tight ends in the draft you can go for. Is there was there other any tight ends that popped out at you? Nope. Linebacker. Yeah. There's a lot of names on there. Now, again, linebacker is a position you can't look at stats and tell the story on a guy. Um, but Jermaine Pratt has been a solid linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's out there. TJ Edwards had a really good year for the Eagles. He's out there. David Long Jr. I don't know how good David Long Jr. is on a down in, down, down out basis, but I actually did a breakdown of his couple's interceptions. He's a really smart player and good in coverage. And then Devin Bush, he's the first rounder. I don't know if he's been I think he's been kind of bad for the Steelers. But those are those are four names I just kind of wrote down to look at. Uh David Long Jr which I think could be the one. TJ Edwards, obviously, again, had a good year for the Eagles and then Jermaine Pratt. But there's there's other names out there I didn't write down on the list. Like, we, we are getting a linebacker in free agency, by the way. Yeah. If it's there's it, either interior defensive line, interior linebacker, or corner, which I would really, if I, had a, if I were a betting man going down to Atlantic City, I'd put, my, I'd put my chips in the center of the table for interior linebacker for thinking that that's going to be the move where if the Giants spend a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I don't want the Giants... They can't, number one. And then number two, um, I don't want the Giants going full out, spending in free agency and you know, paying guys top dollar. Um, I obviously don't want that. But I do want to walk away from this free agency going, ooh, with one or two guys. One guy in particular, right? I, I wanna I wanna walk away being like, ooh, that's fun. And I hope <laughs> that comes an interior linebacker. Can I tell you my dream? Yeah, if there's one position, like you said, that we want to we spend money on, it is one hundred percent linebacker. I know he's a little bit older, but I think guys like Bobby Wagner have shown that this Bobby position... Bobby Wagner's not good anymore. 
but I but I think guys like it's that you could so, play a little bit longer into your thirties. Say Levante David. Levante David. Like that's like I would love that. Yeah, if you want to say Levante David, say it. But Bobby Wagner's not good anymore. No, I'm just saying that the guys that you could play into your 30s and you could be all right, you could be decent. Yeah. So yeah, Levante, Levante David. I mean, Levante David's the best linebacker available. It's just yeah. he's 33 years old. What, but go out and give him a. Why not give him a two, three year deal? Get a little greedy. Possibly. I know we're not that. I know we're not that kind of show, but get a little greedy, Levante David. Let's do it. Uh, I, for me, free agents, I want to be like 25, 26 years old. That's kind of the way I operate. Unless you are a team like the Rams, where it's like, go for it. Let's try and win a Super Bowl this year and get everybody we can. Um, but Levante David may not cost you as much as Tremaine Edmonds. Yeah, Tremaine Edmonds obviously is the big name at linebacker. He's going to get a lot, a lot of money. Like, are the Giants going to? Are the Giants going to make? Here's the thing. Do you can you do you think the Giants are going to be at any position in free agency like they spent the most money on one single player? Because that's what Tremaine Edmonds is going to be. Yeah. You think the Giants will do that? No, no. I'm ag- I'm agreeing with you. Where Tremaine Edmonds will probably require that, and I don't think the Giants will be in on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, do you got any names for defensive line? Uh, there's an interior defensive lineman from Denver who's a pretty good pass rusher. Jermont Jones. Yes, I think he, uh, Robert Smith was talking about him on the combine pod. How like that might be his like number one target, for, and the Bears have all the money in the world. Uh, there's of course Dalvin Tomlinson. Dalvin's out there, dude. Here's the thing: Do you put Dalvin as a three technique now, though? Because Dex is the nose tackle. That's true. That's true. Getting Dalvin would. There's not a free agent the Giants could sign that make me happier than signing Dalvin, even if like like that conundrum I have about nose tackle three tech. But then it's like. You you don't need to get any more depth. Like Dalvin doesn't miss games, <laughs> Dex doesn't miss games, Leo doesn't miss games. Like that was such a sick defensive tackle group. It let you do so many different things on defense. Like when people say, "Oh, don't like," that was one of the things where it's like Gelbin is like, "Oh, he likes to draft defensive tackles." I'm like, I'm kind of for it. Like getting having a sick defensive tackle group lets you do some awesome yeah. things. Which hopefully maybe even there's a guy that's underrated who isn't Dalvin Tomlinson, who isn't you know Jones from Denver. Um, maybe because of how oversaturated the interior defense alignment market is now becoming, I'm not talking about a, um, a Danny Shelton type of guy or a Justin Ellis type of guy, but maybe a guy that's hopefully uh, maybe a little bit of a tier up, like in the mid tier of those, of those, you know, guys that the giants can get maybe on the cheap, but can be a good player. So, I mean, Zach Allen could be one, you know, for the Cardinals, um, like he's been he's been a solid player for them. You know, he's he's been a starter the last two years. The last two years he's gotten, you know, uh, 20 QB hits and 14 QB hits, five and a half sacks, four uh four sacks, decent good tackles for a loss numbers. Like I haven't seen his name thrown out there. I don't know why he, he's not more talked about, but Zach Allen could be a good piece from the Cardinals that could be uh had for a decent price. Before we move off of interior defensive line, what are we doing with Leonard Williams' contract? Are we really going to go into free agency with that $30 million cap hit still on the books? I think they'll restructure it when they need to. Or ex- or, could, or not restructure it. Maybe extend, of, extend him. I th- That might be a... I mean, Leo's not going to take some... Like, Leo will go for his money again. Like, he, he will get big... Like, we just went through D-line group. If Le- Leonard Williams is a free agent, he's the best free agent for this position. Um and how old how old, I mean Leonard's young too, right? He's not he's, I don't even I don't even know if he's thirty yet. No, he's not thirty yet. I think he's twenty eight or twenty nine. Yeah, he's only he's only, he's twenty eight. He'll be twenty nine playing next season. So he'll be going into that twenty nine, thirty year old season. But they can't they can't they can't go into this free agency with that cap hit. Do so the question is Here's here's where I'll be. they can't just cut him though either for the no, same twelve million dollars no. in cap. So no, you if, he, can't. if you can't work out an extension, you do need to go into free agency with that cap hit. That would suck. It it, it doesn't change. Every, it's like if they don't want to extend him and have him be a part of the long term plans, which is fine. That that's fine if that's what they want to do. Um, they, you can't cut him. 
No, that's camp. not what I'm advocating. Even if it for. saves twelve million dollars, you can't cut Leonard Williams. No, I'm There's not. No I'm, reason I'm not for him advoc- to not be on the roster. I'm not advocating need, for that. They don't need cap space that badly. Yeah, I'm definitely not advocating for that. I want Leonard Williams part of part of this team, but just not at thirty million dollars. Is so. We kind of went through the four positions that people have speculated on the Giants spending some money on. Is there anybody else that you wrote down as as a guy to talk about? Eli Apple, um, Jonathan Jones, cornerback from New England. He's around the twenty nine to thirty year old range. Good Marcus player. Peters. Marcus Peters is going to be a free agent as well. I know he was going through some injury stuff, but he's going to be a free agent. He's he just turned thirty. Um, so those are two corners that I have. My I always have my. My like one or like a couple corners that I always like. Oh, this this guy seems to be. There, there's good corners out there every single year to be had in free agency. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that time and time. It's it's so such so, so weird for like a premium position that gets to free like that gets the free agency a lot. Yeah, uh, I just I don't know if the Giants are going to be making those moves. I mean, James Bradbury and Adora Jackson both we got both those guys in free agency. They both been they both were sick. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know if the Giants are going to sign even you know even give somebody like a an average level contract for a corner because this is a very rich corner class and i think they um, want to draft corner so I, I i would go with that too but i more corners you can have the better um, i think I they think, like cordell flaw too yeah um can i do a secondary player and let's have a little debate on this yeah you're gonna say Jabril peppers no but he's out there who's a better football player jordan poyer or, or julian love jordan poyer Who's going to get more money this free agency, Jordan Poyer or Julian Love? Jordan Poyer. Do you think Jordan Poyer is going to get more money, even though he's a little bit older? Definitely. PFF, I think, would disagree with you in their contract projections. I think they would disagree with you. You know who can suck it? PFF. Yes. You want to make a bet on who gets more average on an annual value, on an annual basis? No, and I also could be wrong. I, I do know they projected Ju- Julian Love to get more years than Jordan Poyer. I, I do know that. My knee so bad on my desk. Oh, you What'd hit you your say? knee. What'd you um, say? Let me let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Jordan Poyer, eight and a half million average I'm a per year. Peter and Family Guy right now. And then, oh yeah, they they projected Julian Love to get eight point three average per year. They projected Jordan Poyer to get eight and a half average per year. So around the same. Bon a- voyage. A- oh, see ya. Bon voyage. Um. Love is interesting. I think that's going to... How willing are they to keep their own? Like, I think Julian Love is a guy who's like, you might be better off just taking what the Giants are... And it, I mean, these guys kind of know they have feelers out. Like, all the Giants' unrestricted free agents at this point kind of ha- know what they kind of have out there. It stuff changes when the, st- starts, the stuff starts happening, but that's kind of just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, so Jordan Poyer's out there, um, and that's it. I don't really have I, – I just have the position interior offensive line written down. That's it. Yeah, I don't see them spending much money on interior offensive line. Do you yeah. think – never mind, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. What are you, you going to do? What I texted you about last night. I was going to give no, you some type, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Not no. even going to even get ah, – we just did what I hate that show. Oh, do, you which just is brought like, something up and It's like you bring something up and like, never mind. It's 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 the worst thing you can do as a podcast. We know I something. Hate, you don't. Ha, I hate that shit so much. So much. I, I just did it. I'm very sorry. You, you got to listen to next cut episode. This out, cut this out of the program. No, nope, I'm not cutting it out. You got to listen to next episode. All right. Do you want to end the episode? Yeah, end it like that. That's a horrible way to end it. So, free agency. We will be back when the Giants make some signings, is the way it goes. Uh, and the Giants have a great way of making us be like, are we going to be able to record tonight? And then Monday at 10 a.m., 10 p.m., they finally they make a signing after not making. Like, there'll be 30 guys sign. The Giants don't sign anyone. The, the Giants sign the 31st guy. Like, okay, now we can talk about Mark Lewinsky and John Feliciano. Um. So we will we'll be back once the Giants get some some free agents signed. So get what, ready to welcome film breakdowns of free agents. Those always pop off. So be excited for those. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very busy and crazy week for the Giants. Justin, anything else before we go? Nothing else. All right, we we'll see you guys when we see you. Enjoy your weekend and get ready for some continent because we are coming at you with podcasts. We are coming at you with film breakdowns. 
and social media too. Like you kind of need to be following us on social media free agency week because we are putting out stuff. So and there used to be a trend, Justin, and there probably still is, is anytime the Giants signed a linebacker, edge, or D lineman, I was like, let me find a clip of this person sacking Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones has been sacked so much in his career. <laughs> Even Jihad Ward got one when they just didn't block him uh, yep. versus the Ravens. Ryan Anderson. Remember him? Yeah. He he, he sacked Daniel Jones. Fetty Odenabo. He sacked Daniel Jones. Wow. Everybody that we signed on the D-liner edge has sacked Daniel Jones. Every Everybody be sacking Daniel Jones. So, we'll see you when we see you. Enjoy your weekend. Until then, let's go Big Blue.